Well, we're going to get the word this morning. I've got a word today. I just want to encourage you today in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. First Chronicles 16, verse 8. We're going to read out of that. Let's stand for the reading of the word this morning, if you're able. How many of you love the, the word today? Amen. First Chronicles 16, verse 8. If you were there, say, I'm going to remember. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let their hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and his, the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, your children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in the earth forever. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. We're going to stop right there. Father, we thank you for your word today. I thank you, Jesus, for just a stirring in each and every one of us today. Father, that you'd speak to our hearts through your word today. And Lord, give me the ability to communicate your heart today, what you want to say, Father. And I thank you, Jesus, for your sons and daughters today, that we just receive your word and receive what you have for us today. And that we just thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know, a lot of you may not know me uh, yet, or you're still learning uh, to get to know me uh, some. But just to tell a little uh, history about myself is growing up, I grew up on a farm and both my grandpas were farmers, my uncles were farmers, and my dad grew up on the farm as well. We, we grew up out of Nick, Nicholsville where there was the farm happening, there was pigs, there was cows, and, and it was my lifelong dream to become a farmer. That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be Farmer John. Farmer Jay is what you could call me. And that was my, my, my mission. I wanted to be, other people want to be a police officer, a fireman, you know, an astronaut. I was like, man, I want to be a farmer. You know, I've learned to kind of uh, just act like my uncles. I wore the same clothes as they did, wear the boots. I get out the pigs and the tractors and everything. I loved it so much I had toy tractors that I would play in the house and I would like farm the carpet. Like each room was like a field. And I would take like uh, the disc and, and the, the combine and I'd have like five harvest seasons in a day in each and every room. And I go, and it was more enjoyable when I go to somebody else's house. It's like, man, I'm expanding my farm here. I go to Grandpa's house, my farm's getting bigger. I can farm his carpet. And I had all these, uh, this play corn and stuff like that. And I had this big, big, just uh, mass, uh, uh, just tractors that I had collected over the, uh, the years and that I played with. And, uh, and I had forgot about them, actually. And, and my dad actually just brought them. Um, it's probably about a month ago for, for Asher to play with and the boys and, and they've been up in the shed and I, and I open it up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I remember that tractor and, and I remember that, that combine and it's like, and Asher gets it out. I'm like, you know, I start playing a little bit with him, you know, and uh, he leaves and I'm, I'm still playing a little bit with those tractors. Like, man, I'm going to farm some carpet right now. It's like, it just kind of took me back. It's like, wow, I remember these things. I remember all these tractors. I remember what that looked like. And it just took me back to that memory of being a child in that moment. And it was just kind of interesting how that, how that worked. But that memory and, and what I played with as a, a child, it just brought me back to that moment when I open it up and begin to look at them. And memories are really powerful things. They're really powerful things. And when you think about your mind, your mind has the ability to store loads and loads of information. Like your brain can store loads and loads of information. So much they say you can store like 2.5 million gigabytes of information, like digital data. And the biggest hard drive for computers is like 10,000 gigabytes. Some of you are like, I have no idea what that means. I'll just, just tell you right now, that's a lot. Some of you techie people are like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. But your brain is like, it's like a computer. It's got, it's, it's so uh, just complex. And I think they only say we use like 10% of it or something like that. I don't know. I've, I've heard that, but it'd be interesting if we could use all of it. And, uh, but your brain, it's able to store loads and loads of, 
information. But not only information, it's able to recall events and memories in such an incredible and powerful way that it takes you to that moment, like you're there in that moment, in that, that time that you remember it. Your mind's able to do that, to take you back to those memories, like you're, you're in it in that moment. And if it's a, a good memory, it's a great experience, like there's flood of emotions that it's a, it's a good thing. And, but if it's a bad memory, sometimes it can take us to a, maybe a dark place. If it's a bad memory, it takes us to... And there's so many things that can really trigger memories. You look at it like a song can trigger a memory. You can be in the car and all of a sudden the song comes on the radio and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm back in 1995 with Johnny in the car. We're cruising down the road. Of course, that's my wife. She, she loves turning on the radio. And when I get in the car, it's like blasting loud and it, and it scares me and I jump because it's so loud. But songs trigger memories. Smells can trigger memories. You get a smell. It's like, man, that smells like Grandma Betty. Takes you back to her kitchen. Like, oh, I can, I can picture it now. I can see her now. You know, pictures can, can trigger memories. Matt and I were looking through um, some of our pictures. She's really good about um, getting pictures together and taking pictures. I'm not so great about it, but she has these uh, just pictures that she's put together. And we were looking at the kids, and, and it just took me back to, like, years ago, how they were little and how they were small. Now how much they've changed. It's like, oh, my gosh, I remember that. It triggers those memories and if it's a good one it's an, it's a good experience and but if it's a bad one it can take us sometimes to maybe a, a dark place in our mind but memories are are powerful they're really powerful and here's what we need to understand with memories is that we choose what we focus on yeah. what we choose the memories that we focus on we have that Ability, So you don't have to be a victim to your past memories, to, to your past. You don't have to be chained to your past with your memories. You have the ability to choose what memories that you focus on today. And the memories that you focus on will shape your tomorrow. And all throughout the Bible, we see this theme of remember. Like, remember, we read it in Chronicles. Remember his mighty works. Remember the, the miracles. Remember, we see it all laced throughout the Bible. Like God says to remember, his people are called to remember certain things, to recall those memories, to recall the things that he's done in our lives, to recall the mighty works. We see that in, in Chronicles. We see it all laced throughout the Bible and the Old Testament where God establishes rhythms of remembrance for his people like weekly and, and yearly. He, he establishes a, a rhythm remembrance for, that's weekly of that's for the, the Sabbath to keep that day holy that God rested on that day. He establishes a yearly remembrance and that was Passover that when God led them out of Egypt. He establishes these rhythms of rem remembrance. And we see this in Joshua, when Joshua and the children of Israel cross the, the Jordan and it dries up, they get on dry ground. What they do is they build a monument of 12 stones so they wouldn't forget what God had done that day. An altar of remembrance. So the next generation wouldn't forget the miracles that God had done that day among them. That's why we have monuments and, and memorials in America today. So we don't forget the history of what, what it took to to build this nation and how our founding fathers founded this nation, built upon that. So that's why they're trying to take down your monuments and, and erase history so they can change history so the future generations don't know the real history. Yeah. Memorials and monuments, man, those are, those are important. We see that in the Bible. We see it in Psalms where the psalmist, he goes back and he begins to reflect and remember on the, the goodness of God. He's remembering and recalling events where God came through in his life. And we even see what Jesus with the disciples. The Last Supper, he says, take the cup, take the bread and do, do this in remembrance of me. Do it in remembrance of me. We see this all throughout the Bible. The reason why is because we're a forgetful people. We have a tendency to forget I mean, I'll just be honest. I, sometimes I take a shower and I wash my hair, then I forget if I wash my hair or not like five minutes later. So, you know, it's like, I better just wash it again to be on the safe side to make sure I'm fresh, fully clean for the day. I mean, that's kind of sad. 
I get forgetful. I, I lose our AirPods. I've lost my first set. It ended up in the washing machine. Madeline found it, so I borrowed hers, and hers ended up in the washing machine too. So it's like, okay, you've been, um, you've been removed from having the AirPods any longer. So now I just have the plug-in sets. <laughs> we get forgetful. We have annual years or tests every year of things to remember. We have, some of us, you have your, your spouse's birthday to remember. You have your anniversary. Valentine's Day is coming up, guys. Let's romance our ladies this year. Let's make it special. Try to work better at that. You have annual tests to remember every single year. But we can be really a forgetful people. And we can forget who God is, what he's done, the promises he's made, the miracles he's done. And we end up forgetting what we should have remembered and remember what we should forget. We end up remembering what we should forget and forget what we should remember. So we've got to learn what to remember and what not to remember. We've got to learn to remember what to forget. And the first thing I want to say today for us to remember is to remember God because he remembers you. Remember God because he remembers you. That word remember comes from the Hebrew word zakar. It's Z-A-K-A-R. It means to, to mention, think of, to remember. To remember God. What I mean by that is when you get up in the morning, you remember God. When you go to bed, you remember God. When you eat your food, that you would remember God, that he's the one who blessed you with it. That when you've been blessed with all these blessings in your life, that you remember that he's the blesser. He's the one that gave it to you. When you're crying out in the time of need and he came through and blessed you and gave you resources and, and made a way for you and financially or maybe relationally, that we wouldn't forget what he had done, but we'd bless him and thank him for what he's blessed us with. I see so many people, they... They get blessed, get touched by God. They come to church and then, you know, they're gone. I got my blessing. See you, God. I'll be back at the next crisis. Yeah. Don't forget God, that he's the one that's blessed you, that he's the one that's made a way in your life. When, you're, when your back was up against the wall, when the enemy was surrounding you, when your life was in a pit, that your life was a mess, that God is the one that came through and made a way for you and there was no way when you're crying out for him. He came through and provided a miracle for your life that you wouldn't forget that, the victories that he's given you in your life. That you wouldn't forget that he's the one that's redeemed you, that he's the one that saved you, that he's the one that's healed you, that he's the one that made you his son and daughter, that you wouldn't forget his promises, that you wouldn't forget the prophecies that he's made over your life, that you wouldn't forget his word, that we wouldn't forget God. Yeah. Sounds easy, but... Sometimes we don't do it. We forget them. Especially when crisis hits. It's like we get spiritual amnesia when crisis hits in our lives. Forgetfulness is exasperated. It's like, it's like God, where are you? Where's, where's your goodness? Where are you at right now? It's like we get spiritual amnesia when we get moments of crisis. And it's in those moments you need to go back and remember and rehearse and repeat the victories in your life. You need to go back and remember the things that God's done in your life. Maybe in one season when he delivered you. Because he'll do it today and he'll do it tomorrow. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he strengthened you then, he'll strengthen you today. If he provided then, he'll provide today. If he did it for you, he'll do it for me too. He's no respecter of persons. I can look at your life. It's like, yeah, he did it. Did it for maybe Jenny and he did it for Sean and he'll do it for me too. I can look at your life and begin to recall those things, begin to remember those things, begin to rehearse them and begin to recite them and be begin to repeat them in my mind. When what it does, it builds an atmosphere of faith and an atmosphere for God to do the impossible again. Going back and repeating Remembering the victories of God in my life. Sometimes I got to go back in moments of crisis. You get moments of crisis like you get spiritual amnesia. There's been times in my life it's like I got to go back. It's like, oh God, you were good then. You, you came through then. God, it looks different now. I've got to use my faith all over again. It looks different, but God, you did it then and you'll do it today and you'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. 
begin to remember and rehearse and repeat the victories of God in your life so you can live in victory today and tomorrow. That's what David did, right? Facing Goliath. He remembers when he was a shepherd taking care of the sheep, the lion and the bear. It's like I defeated them. God gave me victory over you and God will give me victory over this giant today. You begin to remember and rehearse and recite and replay and he drew from the past so we could step in victory today facing Goliath. You see it in Psalm 77 when the psalmist, he's, he's really in a place of hopelessness and despair. He starts out that way, but what he does is he says he begins to remember the deeds of God, his mighty works. And then you see him move from, from maybe a place of despair and, and hopelessness to a place where praise begins to outbreak. He begins to remember what God had done in, in his past and praise begins to erupt in his life because he remembered the goodness of God. He remembered how he came through for him then. And praise began to pour, pour out in his life. And move from a place of distance and despair to a place of hope and remembrance where faith was restored, joy was uncovered, and it created an atmosphere for God to do the impossible again in his life. I want to read out of Psalm or Isaiah 43. God's encouraging the children of Israel to remember some things. In Isaiah 43, verse 15 through 17, it says this, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. God's encouraging the children of Israel to remember some things. He's like, remember, I'm the one who brought you out of Egypt. Remember that I'm the one who caused the Red Sea to part. Remember, I'm the one who brought the horses and the chariots and caused them to drown. I'm the one who brought you on the other side. Remember me that I'm the one who did it to remember God. But he goes on in verse 18 and 19. He says, do not remember the former things. Don't consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? So he say, hold on a minute. He says, don't remember the former things. <laughs> it's like you just told us in three verses of the things to remember. Now you're telling to for us to forget it? What are you talking about? He's like, remember me. Remember what I did, but forget how I did it. Because next time I might not do it the same way. I might not do the same thing twice like I did it before. In other words, you can't put God in a box. God won't let you put him in a box. He's like, I might do it different next time. You can't put me in a box. I don't know if you've ever maybe created a formula in your life. Maybe you fasted for two days, you know, and, and God met a need and there was a breakthrough and you go back and do it again and nothing happens. Or then you're like lifting your hand and praising God. You just squint a certain way. You know, you just get just like that. God meets a need and you go back and do it again. Nothing happens. It's like, okay, God, you did, no, you're not going to do it that way. Or, I remember as a worship leader, you create worship sets. And it's like, man, God moved powerfully through that. And you go next time. It's like, let's, let's use that set again. And people are staring at you like at a cow at a new gate. It's like, okay, I guess, God, you're not using that one tonight. Yeah. Not going to use the same thing twice. I remember a time I was, I got pulled over. I got a speeding ticket and I prayed. And I thank Jesus, please forgive me. I got pulled over again. I'm sorry, Lord. Deliver me of this lead foot. I don't know what I do. And God met a need. He paid for my speeding ticket. So the next times I'm like, God, that'd be great if you do it again, Jesus. But he did do it a different way one time. It's like, the police officer came. It's like, you know what? My printer's not working today, so you're not getting a ticket. So he did do it a different way. God's like, I won't let you put me in a box. Remember what I've done. Remember me. Remember my promises. Remember my word. Remember my faithfulness. 
but forget how I did it because I might not do it the same way twice. Remember God because he always remembers you. We see the Hebrew word zakar is first used in Genesis 8 when God remembered Noah. I want to read this out of Genesis 8. It says, Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. You know, it's a really an interesting thought that it says God remembered Noah. He remembered Noah. And it's not like in a way that we forget something and then all of a sudden we remember. That's not what it's talking about. This word Zakar here, it's not only means to recall, but it also means to be constantly on your mind that you're thinking about it. So it's not like God was saying, all right, no, it's been flooding for 40 days. I forgot about you. I got busy on Facebook scrolling and, you know, on YouTube. And then, then all of a sudden I remembered you. I remembered you, Noah. I, I forgot, but I remembered you. It's not what he's talking about. That's what we do. It's like, I forgot to take out the trash, but my wife remembered, reminded me and I remembered or I forgot to take the dog out and then I remember that's not what he's saying. He's saying that Noah never left his mind. He never let Noah leave his mind. And the truth is today, God never lets you leave his mind. You're always on the mind and the heart of God, constantly thinking about you. He can't get you off of his mind. He knew you before the foundations of the world were even made and, and even formed. And he can't stop thinking about you. Thoughts of joy and peace and, and life and, and goodness. Like he enjoys your presence more than you enjoy his presence. He can't stop thinking about you. God remembers you. And I don't want to stop thinking about him either. He didn't stop thinking about me. I don't want to stop thinking about him. He loved us first. Now we loved him. He chose us now. We choose him. He remembered Noah. And he remembers you. And when he remembers you, he doesn't remember your past mistakes and your failures. But he remembers the promise over your life. When he looks at you, he doesn't remember your past mistakes and failures, but he remembers the promise. He's not looking at your past, but he's looking at his past. So the next thing I want to say, remember God's past, not yours. Remember God's past, not yours. Because oftentimes when we're remembering what the enemy wants to do, he wants us to to come along and remember our mistakes, remember our failures, remember our, our shortcomings, remember where we messed up, remember where, what, what we did do and what we didn't do. Remember how much we, we messed things up. He wants to get you into guilt, shame, and, and condemnation. He is the accuser of the brethren. He comes to accuse, and he wants to bring that to your mind, that you remember it, that you become a prisoner of your past, chained to your past today. But God's not... Looking at your past like that, God's got a different memory. You see things different. He doesn't see your past mistakes and failures, but he sees his promise over your life. He sees where Jesus has redeemed all your failures. And we could say it like this, that God's past is your present reality and your future destiny. Wow. 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. If I received Jesus, I, I immediately go back 2,000 years ago, get in Christ and all my sin dies. That's a past and now a present reality and a future destiny that Jesus has done for me. The past has changed. It's been erased. This is what it says in Galatians chapter 2. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And the life which I live in the flesh, I live by faith and the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So when Jesus died, you died. It's an exchange life, yours for his. He took what you had coming and gave you what he had coming. We deserve punishment. We deserve the sin, but he became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God and we receive 
innocence. Well, I've heard about that. Do you remember it, though? Do you remember? When you fail, do you remember your past? Because God's remembering what Jesus did. He sees it differently. Do you remember it? It says this in 2 Corinthians. It says that, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new creation. You're, when you become born again, the old has passed away. Your mistakes, your failures, everything is gone. You are a new creation. You have a new nature if you are in Christ today, if you've received Jesus. And if we're going to live in the victory in Christ today, we can't be defeated in our mind and memory of what Jesus has done for us and how he sees us now. It says this in Romans chapter 6, 5, 11. It says, For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So he's saying when Jesus died, you died. When he was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. Your old man, the old you, the old nature was crucified with Jesus and your trespasses with him. Before you even had a past, God, Jesus had prepared a way for your future through the cross. When you receive Jesus, immediately go back 2,000 years, you're crucified with him and your, your sins are gone, taken care of, removed, cast as far as the east is to the west. And God, when you bring it up to God, God's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I, I forgot that. I forgave that. God chooses to forget. I don't remember it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see those past mistakes and failures, but I see the promise over your life. Some people will say, like, you know what, my old man, I'm trying to, he's alive again. Your old nature, the old you. And it's like, man, I'm doing everything that I can to, to get him down and defeat him again. But the truth is, he's already dead. You just forgot, and you need to remember. The old you, the old man is dead. It's been crucified with Christ. You know, it's not like when you get born again, you have two natures. One side of you is team Jesus, the other side is team devil. It doesn't work that way. You've got a new nature if you are in Christ, a new divine nature attributes inside of you. And the battle is not against your flesh or your, the old men, but it's in the memory of who you used to be. And the memory of who you used to be, it's not in the old man or the flesh, but in the memory of who you used to be. That's why we have to re renew our minds. It's a renewal of our, of our minds. So we begin to think the way that Jesus sees us and we catch up to what's been done in our spirit in that finished work. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, what do you remember? Do you remember your past or God's? Do you remember your failure or his success? Because memories are powerful and what you remember is the way is how you live life. And there's nothing stronger that you can do than what Jesus has done for you. Amen. There's nothing more powerful than what Jesus has done that you did or didn't do. This is what communion is all about. It's about remembering. Yes. Remembering. We take the bread and the cup and we remember Jesus crucified, him scourged, him beaten. We remember what he did and then we forget what we did in that moment because what we do pales in comparison to what Jesus has done. Remember God's past, not yours. And I'll say this today too. Remember God's forgiveness so you can release the offense. Remember God's forgiveness so you can release the offense. There's nothing more destructible to your life that blocks grace in your life than unforgiveness when it gets 
in your heart. Hebrews talks about a root of bitterness springing up. It begins to defile you. It's like it begins to take over and block the grace of God in your life. But you're like, you don't understand. They hurt me. But did we hurt God? They offended me, but have we not offended God? We don't remember or focus on what they did, but we focus on what Jesus did for them. It's like we don't focus on what we did, but we focus on what Jesus did for us. It's the beginning of the year. Sometimes we got to do a spiritual inventory, a spiritual checkup of this in our hearts. This just happened to me not too long ago. I, you know, I'm sure we all love Facebook. People get passive aggressive on there and and uh, everybody's got a microphone, you know, and uh, somebody was making passive aggressive posts uh, about me. And, and it's like, you know what? I felt myself getting a little defensive on the inside. And uh, it's like, you know what? Just don't understand and don't get it. And uh, I began to kind of defend myself. And then, and then uh, you know, I see this person in public. It's kind of like, you know, I'm just going to hang out over here. We don't have to see each other. But, but it's like, I've got to deal with this in my heart. There's the temptation to unfollow, but I saw this person in person. It's like I just gave him a hug and I felt it disarm in me and in the spirit in that moment when I made that step. It's like I'm not going to let this get a hold of me in this moment. Remembering God's forgiveness helps us to release the offense. It's like in Matthew 18 when God forgives this, this servant. He owes all this money that he can't pay back. And he begs and pleads with the king and he, the king has compassion on him and forgives him all his debt. But then he forgets and goes back to his fellow servant who barely owes him anything compared to what he owed and takes him by the throat and says, pay up. And the king hears about it, brings him back in. And it's like, shouldn't you have had the same compassion that I had on you? And he throws him into prison to be tormented. However you want to interpret that, that's not good. <laughs> not a good ending. World of the story we got to forgive. And we do that when we remember how much God's forgiven us, like <laughs> how much mercy, how much grace he's given me, how much forgiveness. Like when, when I get that perspective and I see it in that light, it's so much easier for me to release that offense. And you have an opportunity to do something in this life that you will not be able to do in eternity. You have an opportunity to love people and forgive people in this life that you We'll not be able to do an eternity because relationships are perfect. Yeah. So you can honor God in a way in this life that you will not be able to in eternity by forgiving someone and releasing the offense. I want to say this to remember God's presence in the present. Remember God's presence in your present. Sometimes we need that reminder that God is with us. He's never left us, never forsaken us. That Jesus, he comes through the person of the, the Holy Spirit, that he's with us. He's never left us, never forsaken us. He's like, I'm going to be with you through your dysfunction. I'm going to be with you through your, your ups and downs. I'm never going to leave you. We need to remember his presence in the present. Because some of us, we approach God like he's far off in the sky, like way, way, way out there. But God's like, I'm right here, not only here, but I'm within you. Remembering God's presence in the present. Some things that we need to remember. I want to read Psalm 103 here. It's just, I just love this text. And closing this out here. Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. And he made his ways known, ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor 
Will he keep his anger forever? He has not dealt with us according to our sins or punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. I'm going to stop right there. And it talks about forgetting not all his benefits, that we wouldn't forget the one who's healed us of our diseases, saved our lives from destruction. That we wouldn't forget all these things that he's done for us. I just want to close out with that scripture there, that we wouldn't forget his benefits. So Father, right now, I just, I just thank you, Lord. We want to be a remembering people. I thank you, Jesus. Some of us today, we need to remember the victories in our life. We need to go back and remember and rehearse and recite and replay the, the victories that you've given us. Some of us might be in a state of crisis today. So right now, we're going to go back and we're going to remember and what you've done for us, the victories that you've given us. And I thank you that you're going to give some of us victory today. As we begin to replay that and we begin to partner with you, partner with what you've done and what you want to do, you're looking for agreement. So I thank you, Jesus, right now that we are remembering those things. We're going to focus on those memories and, and where you came through for us, Jesus. I just thank you right now. Some of us just need to remember you. Like, not just on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday in our relationship because, Lord, you remember us and you're always, you always have us on your mind. We never escape your mind. And we just want to confess today that we don't want you to escape our mind. Forget what you've done. Forget your promises. Forget your word. Forget your faithfulness. There might be some of us today that we need to forget our past and remember his. Some of you might be chained to your past. You're a prisoner of your past today, and God wants to set you free of that. So right now, I just thank you, Jesus, that there is no condemnation for those who are in you today. Lord, I thank you that we are a new creation in you. The old is gone, and all things have become new. Lord, right now, I thank you for just severing the past off of people today that the enemy will no longer have the authority to traffic in and out of our lives to, to accuse us, to bring it back to remembrance. And, and when we do, we say, you know what? It's, it's under the blood. It's been taken for us. It's God. I don't even know what you're talking about. God says he's forgotten, and I forgot it too. So we just thank you right now for your sons and daughters being set free from the past today. We remember your past, not ours. Jesus today there's some of us need to remember that you're with us I just thank you for reminders that you're with us I thank you for encounters Jesus I thank you for some of us today we need to remember your forgiveness and release offense so I thank you right now for bringing somebody to mind this very moment that maybe we're holding something against, Lord, that we just release that right now, release that person right now, that we get that out of our hearts and give them to you, God. It's not about them, but it's about the, the status of our heart, the baggage that we choose to carry or release. So we just release that baggage to you today, Jesus. Roll it up in a ball and give it to you. So I thank you, Jesus, for that right now. And I just confess, and declare today that we are a remembering people, remembering your word, remembering your promises, remembering what you've done, Jesus, today. Lord, I thank you for bringing things even back to our memories and moments, words that you've spoken, prophecies that you've spoken over us, Lord, that we wouldn't forget those things. Recalling those things, Holy Spirit, today. So we thank you for that right now, Jesus. And if there's anybody here today that says, you know what, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior of my life. I just want you to lift up your hand. I want to pray for you today. So I want to be a new creation 
in Christ. I'm making that decision today to give my life to him. Amen. Well, I thank you, Jesus, for sons and daughters who are saved, full of your joy, full of your hope, full of your peace, your life today. And I thank you, Jesus, as we leave this place, that we're going to leave with a shout of praise because of what you've done. That we're going to be a people that's going to praise and, and rejoice every single day because of the things that you've done in our lives, Jesus. So we choose to rejoice. We choose to praise you today for everything that you've done, Jesus. And I just bless your people. I bless your sons and daughters today, Jesus, in this house. And we thank you today for these things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen.